Yes, sir, baby, on the radar radio. Yo, special guest in the building, Dreamville in the building, loot in the building. My guy. My guy. What's up? <laughs> What's up, my boy? What's going on? I can't call it. What? No, I can't call it. What do you mean you can't call I it? I can't call it. I don't know. Why can't you call it? Because, man, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you want to hear like a really funny story about you, bro? So when Under the Sun came out, uh -huh. right? You y'all shot that video in a corner store in the Bronx. Yeah. That corner store was around the block from where my girlfriend at the time used to live, right? Uh -huh. So I don't think y'all realize how much of a frenzy y'all caused in the Bronx. Because when that video came out, everybody was like, everybody in that neighborhood was like, what the fuck? When did they shoot this video? When did they shoot this video in oh, our corner store? it was store? very like guerrilla style shit. Like we just popped up, shot it, and then dipped. Yeah. yeah Yo, yeah. everybody in that neighborhood was like, what the fuck? Yeah, nah. It was, it was fun though. Because like we did, we shot three videos that day. Okay. Like after we did Under the Sun, we went straight to um, Sleep Deprived. That's was that the one? Were y'all on a fire escape for that one? I'm trying to remember. No, the fire escape was under the sun. That was under the we sun was too. Like okay, a, okay, okay. It was like a park. Okay. And it was me, Almond, Davion, and um, Mez. Okay. So like literally, we went from under the sun to uh, to sleep deprived. I think it was another video shot that day as well. But we shot all those those uh, Dreamville. Um, Revenge of the Dreamers, Dreamers yeah, yeah, yeah. Joints, uh, in like one day. That's crazy. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. So y'all were just like guerrilla style recording yeah, all these videos in one day. Mm -hmm. That's and y'all was moving around the Bronx. Oh yeah, we was moving. We did the other one. We did Sleep Deprived in Harlem. <laughs> okay, you did Sleep Deprived yeah. in Harlem. So we went from the Bronx to Harlem, and then uh, I think the other shit was shot um, in Queens. Sacrifices. Okay, you're right. Yeah. As it should. As, as you I know, think so. I, I'm not sure. I, I could be. Don't I could be don't, totally quote, don't quote. Don't quote. Yeah, don't quote loot on that. Don't quote loot on that. But that's crazy. Yeah, no, nah, because I remember when it came out, she was like, wait a second. And then we drove past it one day, and she was like, that's the, that's the, from the, from the, under the, the stairs video. and shit. The, yeah, sta yeah. The, the stairs, the, the deli. And I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. I was like, I didn't realize that they was out in the yeah. Bronx. I didn't oh, even that was know. a fun time. Was I was cool. like, I didn't know Cole even stepped out into the Bronx. <laughs> even the dogs that Cole was holding, I think that was random. Like, it was just somebody just walking the dogs and shit, and they, like, let them use the dog. What the fuck? Yeah. That's it was, like, like, super, like, like just in the spur of the moment. I love that. Yeah. Does that happen a lot to you? No. Okay. Well, well, with my shit, yes. But yes. with Cole, I didn't... I didn't really, ex you know, expect that, but I, I see that Cole does that gorilla style. The gorilla style, too. yeah. <laughs> the recording of the yeah, video, it's like no, re no real, uh, what you call that shit? Where, um, what's the shit called with the videos? The stable cam? Oh, yeah. oh, treatment, yeah, 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 like, yeah. Like no real treatment. That's mad funny. Yeah. When Boz was here, right? Mm -hmm. Boz was in here, and he, and you know, you know, Boz likes to talk. Yeah, yeah. Boz loved to talk. Hey, Boz be having good stories, though. Boz has great stories. Boz I love Boz's stories. Yeah. No, this isn't a bad story about Boz. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying. This is a I'm pop saying, story like, about that's Boz. That's one of the best, <laughs> <laughs> one of the best storytellers I know. He has some wild stories. No, he. How we did like what forty minutes with Boz? I, I, you, I know, I know. Gio was here. We did like a forty minute interview with Boz. Gio was already comfy on the couch. We was having a good time. <laughs> and so I asked Boz um, about Revenge of the Dreamers four at the time, and Boz was like. It's in the works, right? Boz just let it. Boz just let it spill, right? Mm -hmm. So I guess my question for you is that one is it in the works, and two was like was D Day kind of like maybe like D Day and the Revenge of the Dreamers sessions was different. Well, okay. for me at least, okay. Like okay. Dreamville sessions, I was in the thick of that shit. Right. Um, D Day, I, I got a call and 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 I, I realized that um some verses I had did was gonna be on there, which I was okay. stoked about. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. because because you're on two or. I'm on two songs. Two songs I'm on, on the starting five, five yeah. and uh, like wine. Yeah, yeah. Like wine and starting five. I did both of those verses in like 2018, 2019. Oh, so those wow. Those are older verses. Yeah. Okay, okay. So with Revenge of the Dreamers, those are like current verses, like just spilling shit out. Um, with D Day, those are like like older verses, but you know the fact that people it, it, like you know people received it well. Um, I'm kind of yeah, because for me it's yeah. like oh shit, them old ass <laughs> verses, but people are really fucking with it, so I I, I appreciate that. A lot. So can you confirm or deny that? Rod four is gonna is happening. Oh, I, I cannot confirm that shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's not like Boz. He's he not like Boz. He's not about to walk up in here and be like, like Boz though. It's yes. in the works, but I can't. Okay, confirm it's, that. at least it's in the works. At yeah, least yeah. it's in the works. <laughs> and you know, I, w having him here, it's only right that I asked you the same thing I asked him. What was you know? I'm sure everybody has their own favorite moment from those sessions. What was your favorite moment from those sessions or favorite memory? I guess. Yeah. My favorite memory is uh, I, I have a few. Like it's it's so many different. So much shit that uh, that happened. I think one of my moments was like seeing that Chris Bosch was in the corner making beats. They know that I didn't know that nigga was making beats. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Fire ass time. beats too. <laughs> Wait a second. Yeah. Time out. <laughs> Yo. I need to take this in. I have not. I, I had this... to take. I, I had to. I had to. I had to. I had to sit there and you know 
process it. Has this story been told before? Uh, I'm not sure, but I, I've, I've I've said like in previous shits where like yo, one of my craziest moments was realizing but, uh, that Chris Bosh makes fire ass beats. How tall is Chris Bosh again? Tall as fuck. Tall as fuck. I don't know how tall that is, so, but he's tall as fuck. He's tall as fuck. Sitting in the corner. Just with a beat, beat with a beat, beat, beat machine? machine. Yeah, on the beat machine making beats. Did any of his beats make it to the final? I don't think so, but he has some heat. <laughs> He did. I, I want to hear what a Chris Bosh I'm pretty beat sure, sounds I'm, like. I'm, I'm pretty sure niggas rapped over it though. But okay, okay. I, I don't know if they if any of those made the the, the cut. final cut. Yeah, but he has some heat. So he was just like, was it like he was just? I could, I just see Chris Bosh in a corner with his long ass legs like this. Yeah, he was on the there, beat machine. He was in there as Chris Bosh, the producer. He wasn't the basketball player. <laughs> no, but I think of him with his long ass <laughs> yeah, legs, just yeah, in there like this, like trying to like figure out like I right, like you know what I'm saying. That, so Chris Bosh was in there making beats. Yeah. Did you get to rap over one of his beats? No, I didn't. Okay. I heard him though. Okay. I didn't get to rap over him, but I did hear I did hear him. Were they hard? They were fire. Okay. They were fire. All right. I I'll, I'll, I'll take I'll give him that. They were fire. I'll take your word for it. Nah, I, for real. Chris Bosh, I want I I'm look what's his producer Chris tag? Chris Bosh makes nice beats. I don't know what his producer name or tag is, that but be, he was in there making beats. I remember that. Like that be his tag. Chris Bosh makes nice beats, voiced Chris by Bosch, Lou. Hey, I got you, Chris. Oh. I'll let your boy. You see what I did there? I'll I like your boy. I, I like that. That shit dope. Well, anyway, okay, so obviously, you know, congratulations, of course, on the success nah, of, of ROD3 you. and everything that came with it, the thank Grammys, you. all that good stuff yeah. like that. Uh, incredible. Um, but now moving past that with D-Day, right? When this tape dropped, ask him. I, he got a text from me, like, because we had already set this interview mm. up at the time, Gio in the building. Um, I had sent it to him immediately, and I was just like, yes. Like, I was like, I was like, this cup, the cover, the gangster grills. Mm -hmm. I was like, everything about this, I'm on Bored, and so with this being said, so the verses you had they were from 2018. Mm -hmm. Tell me the story of how this tape came together. I guess from your perspective of of, of everything. Well, I heard the tape like everybody else did. Like oh, all the new songs. I heard all the new songs. Even even my I heard it like everybody else. Oh, it wasn't like so, you had already so heard me, of. Okay, yeah. So for me, it was like uh, it 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 was hella exciting because one, the the fact that DJ Drama uh, introduced me on the Star and Five shit. That shit blew my mind. I'm not. Mm. Gonna, I'm not even gonna front. You know what I'm saying? Like me and my homies, we grew up listening to DJ Drama and the Gangster Girl shits. Like we we grew up to that shit. So for me, it was like, bruh, this nigga said my name, and he like introducing me in this song. Like it's it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So uh, for me, I received it like everybody else did. Like when it, when it dropped, I was listening to like everybody else. Wow. Yeah. That's that's crazy. I would have yeah. thought you would have heard the whole tape before it dropped. Nah, nah, nah. I ain't hear it. Did you so those verses that you did? Did you at least know that that, that like when you did start? Yeah, yeah. Five, that I, knew those, I knew those okay. verses were going to be on there. Yeah. But did you know everybody else was going to be on that record too? Yeah, okay. I did. I knew who I knew who was going to be on it. I just didn't know what was going to be on the actual project. I didn't hear mm. all the other songs. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. That's crazy. I would have thought you would have seen Pete the cover art. You would have peeped this. You would have peeped that beforehand. But nah. The, wow. Yeah, yeah. Nah. Wow. Yeah. Well, how does it feel to be on a Gangsta Grills tape then? Fire. <laughs> Cause like it's it's I've been getting mad love off those uh off those songs especially uh starting five not yeah. starting five but like one like one yeah yeah, yeah. Cause so you I, cause me personally like I try to stay away from the super hip hop hip hop shit mm -hmm. so uh, at first I was like man they, I don't know if niggas gonna really fuck with this but when it dropped and I got all the love from it I was like wow they actually really fuck with this yeah cause even with Gold Mouth I was trying to like okay how can I get past the boom bap shit cause for me mm -hmm. it's like I didn't want to box myself in. With the boom bap and the super hip hop stuff, like that's what I started with. But I kind of wanted to like, I, I kind of wanted to move from it to like just prepare myself to be more of an artist than just this super hip hop rapper. Like, so it wouldn't look weird when I tried to do new shit or different shit. But I, I love it. That's dope, man. Yeah. Congratulations nah, on thank that, you, bro. Congratulations on that. Thank you. And so right now, right. We were fresh off Dreamville Fest. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't get... It was funny because I was actually thinking about going like two weeks ago, but then it was just like planning everything really quickly was just like... I was just like, all right, I can't do it. And I'm already... You didn't go? I didn't go. Oh, you But I'm already, I'm already very upset that I didn't... You that, should be. That I didn't go. You should be. I saw all my friends there. They told me... Bro, they told I, me... I had... That's like... I I had some of the most fun that I haven't had in a, in a while. Like, Dreamville Fest was fire. They told me that... Um, one of my friends tweeted, they was like, yo, you really wasn't allowed in VIP un unless you was from Queens. And I was like... Fuck, <laughs> fuck! I'm like, I should have gone. I'm nah, like, you God. definitely should have. I'm bro. like, damn, I could have, I should have gone. But how was it for you? How? Because I feel like with Raleigh, it's different from when you're doing festivals in any, in any other place because mm -hmm. like they have it contained in one area. Yeah. Versus with Raleigh, the whole city was open up, so you had the festival and the city. 
You know what I mean? It was like right huh. there in the city. Okay. Versus when you go to like Rolling Loud or something like that. You know, no shade to Rolling Loud, but it's like in a stadium and right. it's contained. Very, very tightly packed. Yeah, yeah. Very you know what I'm saying? With Raleigh, it's like super open. So you can kind of like enjoy yourself. Yeah. You can enjoy the festival in the city. I'm not from Raleigh, but you know. Yeah. I was at Astro World. Astro World? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> had to stare at Blake Lee, the, Blake Lee in the camera. But, nah, I like that. Because even when I was like, I'll be honest, when I was looking it up, because I had never been to any of the past Greenville Fest, even though I wanted to, mm. and I was looking at where they were holding it, I was like, damn, that's like a wide open space. And yeah. like, it, like, it looks like, it looked like it's nice. Park. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so like park, you got the greenery, um, you know, it's stuff to do. You know, when you go, I mean, you know, I've been to other festivals and it's like, it's not really much to do outside of when you perform and, you know, just being there for, for the vibe or whatever, but... It's really a, a whole a whole thing. It felt like a family reunion to me. And even when mm. you don't see familiar faces, it still feel like a lot of love. Right. Because this is because the one before, like right before the pandemic, obviously got canceled mm -hmm. because of COVID. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know, was there another one? It was. It was the first one. The first one happened, the and that was happened. that was fire. And then um, the second one. And then COVID happened, and and then you have this one. I believe, one. I believe. I believe two of. I don't know. Wasn't there one that got one. affected by a hurricane? Yeah, there was one that yeah, got affected yeah. by a hurricane, and then, the, then that one after that was COVID. And then one, damn. Yeah. Well, at least you know, at least this time, like everything looked incredible. Right. You know what I'm saying? From what I saw online, from what I saw from the performances, um, that was streamed. They streamed, and it was a weekend. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, the after party looked crazy. Oh yeah, yeah. How'd it feel? How'd it feel? Like how'd it feel to, to finally be back for you? Like it felt great. I had my mom and my daughter there, so for oh, me, it, it felt nice. really, it felt really good. It felt like. Uh, Felt like home. Felt like being I know home. I a family and, reunion already. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. It felt like just just being around a lot of friends and family because I, I had a lot of that there with me backstage. Word. Yeah. That's that's nice. It nice little fan. Dreamville. Yeah, nah. Dreamville Fest. A family. A family affair. <laughs> if you want to say. That. If you if you want <laughs> if you want to say that. So right now we're working. Um, when we're recording this Monday, you got the deluxe your project coming out, right? right. So. Why deluxe? Why now? Because because you know we're, it dropped last year, right? Right. So why why are you deciding to put out the um, deluxe? It's it's right it's now? for a lot of different reasons. When I dropped um, when I dropped Gold Mouth the album, like I was ready to go. I was excited, right? And I was ready to hit the ground running with like uh you know press and and hit the ground running with uh rollout. Yeah. But then my pops passed, mm. and it kind of slowed me down, and it kind of like made me step back from social media. Okay. And so I feel like with the deluxe, I can kind of Give it a second try. And at that time, my grandma passed too, so I was dealing with a lot. Okay. Um, but I feel like with this deluxe, I can pick shit back up, and I also wanted to bring the the latter half of the album up with, in tempo, you know, like with vibes and shit like that. Mm -hmm. I felt like um, the album was fire, but it was also kind of like low in energy, so I kind of wanted to bring the energy up a little bit. Like I wanted to bring the energy up as like a, a changes. Okay. You know how the energy was yeah, and changes, yeah, 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 yeah. GD. So I kind of wanted to bring that back to the album. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I love that. And it's all you, these, these. All these, yeah. How many records? Uh, Six. Six new records, all you. Um, Is there a reason why you wanted it to be all you? Um, Yes, because I felt like with the. With the. Uh, Initial the album, project, yeah. Yeah, the, with the album, I felt like, you know, I had a lot of features in there, and mm -hmm. which, which you know, I felt like every feature held they own. We got to run on, down these features. Songs. But I just wanted to be able to showcase that I can I can make songs on my own too, you know. Right, I and you had a great you had a great list of features. Though, yeah, yeah, obviously. no, the features were fire. Westside Boogie, yeah. Saba, Black yeah. Soul. Obviously, you know you got the Dreamville, JID, Ari Lennox, yeah. BJ Chicago Kids, Kaz. Like you got all a great people list. that I, I love and appreciate and music that I listen to, and I just felt like those were you know perfect choices. But I right. also wanted to you know with the deluxe just have a couple songs on there where it's like you know I I can I can stand my I can stand on my own too right. as well. And I feel like your fans want more of you, bro. Cause I know I'm pretty sure, yeah, you know, I be trying. I'm I'm so I'm such an introvert. So I be mad low key, especially with like music and outside of music. I be I be hella low key. And I know I say that shit a lot in my songs, but <laughs> I be ducked off. But um I'm trying to I'm trying to get into uh mm -hmm. the 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 mode of like being outside more and, and showcasing myself more, even my personality and stuff like that. Word. Because this is your second, well, I mean, the deluxe, obviously, but this is like your second project with Dreamville. It's right? my second pro It's my second project with, with Dreamville, but, but Gold Mouth is my first album. People think West 1996 Part 2 is my first album. Okay, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's my first my, project yeah. with Dreamville, but Gold Mouth is my first album. And you've been with Dreamville for Since seven? Since 2017? Seven? seven? Oh, okay, so five, so five years now. Mm -hmm. So two projects in five years. I'm sure people have been like, Luke. 
we need more. Yeah, life be life, and so I, I, be, I know life be life. Be trying to figure shit out, and I like I be telling people all the time. I feel like I'm building the plane and flying it at the same time. I'm just trying to figure shit out, mm. and um, you know what works for me, what don't work for me. I, I'm big at like, I I don't mind failing, so I'm big at like learning from mistakes and and trying right. to figure out you know what's best for me. And I love that we still get you like in between the projects and whatnot on obviously like the Revenge of the Dreamers, mm -hmm. the D Days, like mm -hmm. things like that. You know, we still get you even right. if we're not putting out projects like every every year type shit. Mm -hmm. Like I like that, but I think I'm, I'm. I definitely think I'm about to start. Uh, I ain't gonna say I'm, I think I'm about to start, but nah. I'm, <laughs> he don't want to give y'all make a I'm promise. I'm definitely gonna start putting out more music. It's just like I just had to get out of out of the way of myself. Like in half the songs that I was talking about on Gold Mouth, it's just me being in the way of myself. I think the story of you getting signed is like so crazy too, because you were working at Walmart at the time, right? Um, or was that before? Well, that's that's when I first met Cole. Oh, that's when you first uh, met Cole. But okay. when I. Yeah, like initially around the time I got signed, I was working at Target actually. A Target, yeah. okay. Yeah. So you worked at Walmart and Target? Yeah, Walmart and Target. Wow. You're mm. you're a brave, you are a brave, hey, man. brave man. Had to make some money, man. I got had the kids. <laughs> I had to figure it out. <laughs> you know, I, I'm just gonna make a hunch here. I feel like like those like those people of Walmart Twitter accounts, I feel like one of them you created. <laughs> I, I probably did. <laughs> I probably did. <laughs> like you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, Where they got yeah. the people at Walmart and it'd be like it'd be like moms in there with they like fuzzy slippers and like some like cheetah pants, and right. you was like that's how you came. That's how you stepped out the house today. That's funny as hell. <laughs> I worked at the airport too, but yeah, I know I, I peeped that online too. Yeah. Which one? Which one of those was the worst out of all the jobs? Walmart. Walmart. Walmart uh, was obviously. the worst. Yeah, I, I was fueling planes at the airport, but that wasn't. It wasn't terrible because you get to the airport was different. You get to meet do, new people every day. Right. With Walmart, it was just like you got people yelling at you. You got people talking to you crazy. You know. So yeah, I, I hated Walmart. The customer is not always right. N ever. I don't care what nobody say. Customers never right. Niggas weird. <laughs> what was like? I guess, <laughs> but now I gotta know, like, cause like you, like I'm, you're looking at me, and I see the PTSD in your eye from Walmart. Oh, bro, yeah. <laughs> nah, I, I had, I had some crazy experiences. What was Walmart. your, uh, what was your worst experience at Walmart? I know you have to remember it. Uh, I had this, uh, I had this lady. She, I was uh, ringing her up or whatever. I guess the prices was wrong, and I was trying to explain to her what had happened. And she basically was trying to get her her uh, her son. She was like, "Yo, my son's in the car. I'm gonna call my son. He's a he's a uh, what she say? He's a he's ranked number one in um in MMA or some shit, right? And I made a comment on, on the fact, well, he won't be number one if he did, cause he ain't gonna come in here touching me. But uh, <laughs> so I had that situation, and I, I, bro, I had so many I had so many situations, bro. But I, I don't condone violence. violence. <laughs> I'm not gonna. Lute said, if you want the smoke, yeah. I got it for you. I'm always with the shit, so I'm TPG. <laughs> I am. I, I don't bother nobody, but when people like bother me, I, I, yeah. That's crazy. You know, I know, so when we were talking about, um, obviously, uh, when you were putting out the deluxe and the project, you know, you spoken that you was dealing with, uh, with loss at the time. Mm -hmm. How did you kind of... Help get help yourself get through that. How how are you doing mentally? Honestly, I'm, like, I'm still processing it. And okay. um, you know, I was supposed to go on tour with Saba, which you know, I was super excited That's about. That's the tour shit. going on right now. Yeah, it's about to. Yeah, it's about to. We're like, fam, I th we just had Fem dot up here. He's on that tour too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah fire. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, but like, yeah, I was dealing with a lot of that stuff. So I'm and okay. I'm still trying to process a lot of that. So okay, you know, I've just been taking it a day at a time. Day at a time. Yeah. Do you have any like things that you do throughout the day to kind of keep yourself leveled? Or? Um, you know, I just try to just try to keep myself grounded and just try to. Uh, me, I'm the type of person when it deals when it goes like with trauma and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I like to work through it. Okay, but now I'm trying to like really process shit so that I can get through it. If that makes any kind of sense. Yeah. Because instead of you know you working through it, you're not really dealing with it. And right. me, I'm just trying to deal with it head on so that I can continue to work. Mm, okay. Yeah. Deal with it head on so that way you can get back to the music, get back to the things mm -hmm. that you know you love to do. Yeah. That you love to work on and you love yeah, to do. Because I feel like if I'm working through it, I'm just shoving it under the rug. Word. I definitely feel I definitely suffer from that mm -hmm. when I'm going through shit. I do that I do that shit all the time. Like that's my that's my coping mechanism is to just work through it. Cause I, I have something to look forward to. Right. You know what I'm saying? I know what I'm putting into it, so I got something to look forward to and not think about that shit. Exactly. I'll but, book like ten interviews in a week or like ten freestyles in a week and I'll be like, yep. This is what's gonna get me through yeah, this week. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this yeah, what's I'm gonna like, get yeah, me through I'm, it. I'm I'm good, but like nah, I, I'm in a space now where I'm just like I just I just gotta deal with it head on. Uh, okay. You know, so I can continue to work and be my best self because I feel like the more and more I pile on, then at some point that shit's gonna come to a head. Mm. So and I it guess, always do. It always do. Of course, it'll like it'll reach it'll boil mm. up to the point when until you're like, and especially when you least expect it. 
Yeah. And that's what always gets me. Like, I be like, oh, I'm good. I'm fine. And then something happened and then I just... Snap out of it. Yeah, I just blow up. Yeah, I think it's like, it's just like, you know, like you like you said, it's like one day, once you stop moving so much and you stop working so much and you actually like, you're in bed or, you know, you're somewhere and you like actually have the moment to like sit with your thoughts and mm-hmm. you're like- it catch up to you. You're like, oh shit. And then you're like, damn, I didn't really deal with that the way I was supposed to deal mm-hmm. with that. You know what I'm saying? I just worked through it. Which mm-hmm. I feel like that that's like my experience. I'm speaking from personal experience there. Like, no, I'll no, just, I, I feel you. I'll hit the train I, ride, I'll be like... Wait. Even outside of like just pushing through it, like sometimes I have my days where I am tackling uh, my mental health shit and I feel like, all right, I, I got through that or I discovered, you know, that I, I'm, I'm healing. And then I, I reach a point where I'm like, damn, I feel like I didn't learn anything at all because I have a moment where it'll just take me like 10 steps back. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. And it's just, it's it's a... It's a learning. It's a learning thing, and it's a it's a it's a it's a battle for me. Right, like it, it's a battle. But it's a, but it's a battle that that you're winning. It's a battle. Yeah, it's you're a battle. Be... I'm willing to I'm willing to take on. And you're I... gonna make it through. Right, for sure. And we're gonna have e- even better music than we for had sure. before. It's for gonna sure. be it's gonna be a match. Because I feel like if people love my music from 2018, 2019, then they definitely gonna love the shit that I have now. Right, they're listening to D Day and they're like, "This is fire." Right. Then like think about what what they about to get on this deluxe. Right. And that's what I constantly have to tell myself. You got it, bro. Yeah, Come I on. know. You got it, I man. Know. You got it. Like so th- I'm hanging in there. This deluxe six songs. Uh I'm extremely excited for it. After that, what are you kind of thinking about doing for the rest of this year? What what else you kind of got cooking up besides Revenge of the Dreamers 4? <laughs> I actually <laughs> that in there. Um, I had to throw that in there. To be honest, I'm I'm just excited to what the universe got planned for me. Right. You know, I got goals and shit like that, but my goals is more tied to my mental health and getting myself right and getting back to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but whatever the universe got planned for me, I'm I'm open and I'm 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 ready for it. Word. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. I'm just working. I'm just that's all it is. I just just want to put the work in and and get back to get back to where I'm supposed to be. Word. And we're going to get you there, bro. Oh, for sure. And we're going to have you, uh, again, we're going to have you come back one day. You know what I'm saying? We're going to mm-hmm. have another interview. We're going to keep doing these. You know what I'm saying? Nah. I love my I love my Dreamville family. Nah. Um, and I appreciate you being here with me today. I'm very much looking forward to the deluxe of the project. Nah, I appreciate you having me, bro, for real. Of course. And you got the green on. I know this wasn't planned. Nah, it, was, it wasn't it planned. It wasn't planned. I, he, I love green. He, he wasn't planning on wearing green, but it just Orange is my favorite color, but I, I love green. green. Oh, thanks, man. Green looks, green looks good on my skin. It's my favorite. It's my favorite color too. I think you I know, see. as as you can, <laughs> as the green clouds, the green lights, nah, the green logo. Though. We here. No, nah, we here for sure. I appreciate you again, man. Uh, make sure y'all go get the deluxe out Monday. Uh, anything else you want to let them know? Now's the time to do it. This camera right here. And where they can follow you at? Oh well, you can follow me on Luke underscore West Nine. That's on all platforms. Uh, the Lux coming on the twenty fifth, which is a Monday. Yes. And so, so this coming Monday, make sure y'all yeah, go this tune in Monday. And um and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Like stay tuned. There you have it. Yeah. Loot on Got the radar. Coming. Oh, where well, they can follow you at? Loot underscore West. Oh, Loot, you did yeah, 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 no, that. Sorry, good. my brain skipped the beat for good. a second. You see, you feel me? Um, but make sure you go follow him, go run all that up out now, go show him some love. Support is free. Until next time, Loot on the radar. Appreciate, Appreciate you. Y'all. My Appreciate brother. you, my guy. Love.